My name is Kelly Fitzgerald, and today we're going to talk about the accidental abyss and what you can do and how you can protect yourself from all the little extra bits of information on the internet that are stored about you and about your friends and your family and your coworkers and your enemies and everyone else. So a little bit about me. My name is Kelly Fitzgerald. I've been working at Symantec since 2003. I've worked on all the major teams, consumer, enterprise, and product security. I spend a lot of time at Hacker Drink Up, Hacker Conferences. Um, I manage the internal pen test personnel. I'm the facilitator for the Crypto Review Board, and I am a serious nerd. That's a picture of one of my bookshelves that I took as a joke to put on Facebook, but there's Martha Stewart's housekeeping, discrete math, and ethical hacking. And that's just one sample shelf. It gets worse. I also like a really interactive conversation, so feel free to shout out. I also have a dozen sprinkles cupcakes, so if you shout out with something really cool, there's a cupcake in your future. <sighs> My mother said bribery was the secret to everything. So let me tell you about how the idea for this talk was born. I travel a lot for work, and I'm really smart, so I like to think about really important stuff. So I was thinking about DNA and, and all of those genes and really important stuff. Okay, maybe not. No, no, no. Actually, I was thinking about alternative energy and better ways to save the planet and use the atom. Okay, no. The truth is, on really long plane flights, I watch bad reality television. So that would be the Duggars, the girl who has an addiction to drinking nail polish, and that man who, we'll see in a second why I blacked out his eyes, but he's very cheap. So let's look at the guy who's cheap. We're going to call him Bob Smith. We'll learn this in a minute why. And he's so cheap that he makes his family use a paper towel dispenser at home so he can measure how much paper towels they use. He takes the family to a Chinese buffet, like six people, and he only buys two plates. And the whole family sits on those really cheap high school chairs. He also keeps two budgets. One budget that he shows the family that shows that they're barely scraping by. They're just, like, broke. And then the secret budget which, by the way, the TV station also showed, and Netflix also shows. It has his social security number, his bank account number, his ID number at the school district that he works at, as well as so much other information, including his kids' social security numbers, that I got a little worried, so that's why he's blacked out. But then I did what I do next, and I wanted to see what else I could find about this guy, because now I'm interested. And the thing I like to do is really above-board recon. I find it most interesting. So by watching the video, I saw that he had a shirt on, and it had the name of a school. So I found out that it was a college preparatory school. And it was a magnet school that he founded. But it graduated its last class in 2011. And I also found out that he had a PhD. Um, other things I learned is I looked at his social security numbers. And has anybody ever dissolved how social security numbers work? Yeah, there's a guy there. Be careful. You can have a cupcake if you want for doing that. But um, anyway, the first three digits are where you were born or where your card was assigned to. And then the middle two end up being kind of just numbers that increase slowly. There's a pattern to it. Um, you can look it up on Wikipedia. It's a lot to explain. Or you can look it up on... I think it's um, socialsecuritynumerology.com. But here is a list of all of the social security numbers in California. That's where I'm from. And so within likelihood, you've taken out the entropy of three digits for somebody. And so the fact that all of the social security numbers that I saw on the spreadsheet were California-based meant that um, Bob and his wife, who are older, um, you don't get your card at birth back then. They lived in Oakland at that time. 
and then the kids ended up being born in California because they were of the right age. So before 1986, you got it around 14. That's how old I was, so you can kind of figure out somewhere my age. Uh, if you were 86 to 90, you get it by about 5, and post-90, you just get it at birth. So, Now, what do we know? We know at 14, Bob was living in California, both of his children are in California, and that he's cheap. Has anyone used Spokio? Lots of people, I'm sure. I love Spokio. It's the only service I actually pay for. Um, the things I like, it tells me the home addresses. It gives me its best guess of email addresses. It gives me best guesses of age and property values. So I get a real good idea. But what I really enjoy Spokio for is it gives me the business analytics that credit card companies, that charities, and other similar companies use when they're trying to target ads. So for Bob Smith, this is what they think. They think that he loves reading, and he has children, and he owns pets, and he likes cars. I look myself up. I love it. By their analytics, they think I'm a boy. I'm guessing this is because I buy all these code and nerd books. And then by their analytics, they also know I like toys. So they, they got that right. And they think I have children. Well, what they don't understand is that all those toys are for me. So I, I really like the way they've analyzed me, because all the conclusions they've come to are pretty wrong. Um, but hopefully for Bob, and you can check yourself out, it may be true. You can also opt out of Spokio. I'm finding more and more as I go to innocently search somebody just to learn more that um, they've been removed and all I can find out then is their name and their age. So I recommend doing that because, you know, thwarting someone like me is probably a good idea. The best thing I can say is if you can get somebody's primary email, you have their gold. Most of us have probably had our primary email for 10, 15 years and we've done a lot of stuff with that email. Think about it now, and then you see the montage in your head, and it gets a little scary. Uh, so if I can find that email and start Googling around and then start looking at the sign-ons used for that on eBay, on Amazon, on Facebook, I start getting a lot of dirt, and that's how I really start building the dossier. So Spokio revealed Bob's email as bob7 at gmail.com. That's not the real one, but once again, I'm protecting him. So one thing I learned was Pandora. He likes Between the Sheets by the Isley Brothers. He'd just listened to that. So if I ever met him somewhere, I would kind of know what kind of music he likes, and we could have a conversation about that, and You Rock My World by Michael Jackson. Well, I also learned this. Though he kept most of his posts locked, on Facebook, he kept his profile picture unlocked. Most people do. I love that. And he's very proud about his guns. And I've also learned by giving this speech a few times, if I say, check out those guns, like half the men in the room kind of flex. So now I've learned how to compliment a guy. Thank you, Bob. So what we see with Bob Smith is that he had a major PII leak through the course of the show. Um, and using just some really, really boring information, I was able to get more. I also found his eBay login and found out that he had recently sold some laptops. Those laptops likely had information from the magnet schools, his personal business, all that other stuff. So now the recon's starting to get a little weirder. Also, something interesting through eBay, when you, have some, when you buy something on eBay and it gets sent to you through PayPal and the label, that usually has your home address on it. So if I really want to know for sure where you live, I can buy one of your eBay auctions and use that as a really good barometer, because that's probably accurate and new. So this is the master class. That other stuff we were doing was just playing around. And where do you use these school skills? You use them at work, you use them at dating, and you use them in relating. So first thing, use Spokio, try to get the primary email. You really want the primary email because that person's had it for 10 or 15 years and done God knows what with it. Go Facebook yourself. The one thing you can find out in Facebook, um, I find that some of the apps do this and some don't. They don't show your friends' names in alphabetical order. 
I have it on good information that it's a 70-30 mix. So when you look at your friends, 70% of those people are the people who are stalking you constantly, who are looking at your statuses and checking you out, and 30% is random noise. So that gives you a good idea of who's looking at your profile. Also, this timeline summary, and I think I typed in something like Jane Doe, something as um, generic as possible. Those six people, they're all probably checking out your Facebook quite a bit. So if you want to know who's checking you out, those are good indicators. Bing.com social will actually search Facebook and Twitter. So you can search for your name, or you can search for posts, or you can search for things by other people. Another similar app is OpenBook. I like this one, too. I haven't had a lot of luck when I try to really dig in to try to find all the open posts by a particular person, but maybe they're tweaking it as time goes by. Both of these are really interesting tools. And then there's open status search, and I don't have the right picture, but it's a similar thing, and it searches people who have not locked their statuses. It's a good thing to check for yourself, because really you want to lock down your statuses as much as possible so that you can keep people out, like me, from looking. Um, has anyone used the Wolfram Alpha, Alpha self-analytics tool? It's interesting. Wolfram Alpha makes Mathematica, which if you're a mathematician is like the most favorite software on earth. You have dreams about it and you want to cuddle it. But they also made this analytics for Facebook. So you log in and then it gives you lots of information, like your posts from um, a timeline, how many words it was, what time you typically post, all this interesting stuff. I don't know if it really saves the world, but it's kind of fun. Information is power. Uh, we see this now. Facebook chooses certain posts to go into your feed. You don't get to see everybody's most of the time. Uh, someone commenting regularly will stay in your feed. So if you want to keep seeing somebody's uh, posts, you should comment on them. Someone gazing at your page regularly, you're more likely to see them in your feed. This is this point where I like to get information. Does anyone notice anything else interesting in Facebook? Cupcake. Tips for looking at strangers. Um, hunt for non-friends to your heart's content. They will never know that you're stalking them, or at least sign out of your Facebook. Profile pictures are generally unlocked, and pictures are frequently unlocked. But more so, looking at the pictures is looking behind the pictures to see what's going on, to see what books are in the foreground, to see what you might see in a reflection in the window. You can gain a lot more information by what was unintentionally shown than maybe what was intentionally meant to be displayed. Um, so that's a lot of ways that you can kind of figure out more about a person. Friends lists are frequently unlocked. So you, one of our these cyber guys here, may have the best, tightest, locked up Facebook on earth. But unfortunately, you have to friend your mother. It's like a rule somewhere. And if your mother's like mine, she comments on absolutely everything and has almost no security locks. So that means anybody really trying to check my very boring posts about security out, they're, all they're going to need to do is look at my mother's profile and then start seeing all the things she's commented on. Because she doesn't delete anything from coming into her th feed. And most people have someone like that, a chatterbox. So if you can't see the information in the person that you want, um, go looking through their friends, and likely you'll find a chatterbox. And that's what you need. Somebody usually technically naive who likes to talk a lot. Date smarter. So has anyone ever dated online? OK, I've done a lot of it. I'm like a professional. One thing I noticed was a lot of people put their full names as their dating profile or their email address that they use everywhere. And that kind of doesn't seem like a great idea. And then a lot of times you see pictures and you're like, that looks like a headshot. <laughs> so this guy actually did his full name and it looked like a headshot. So I, I decided to search for him and see what I could find. And there's his Facebook page. That was pretty boring. And then I found his IMDb page. And he was in everybody's favorite movie, Walk a Mile in My Pradas. I know, I know. 
I could have gone out with the guy who walked a mile in my Pradas, but I didn't. And a lot of people do that. And innocent dating sites are probably not so bad. Okay, I, I had a slide. I don't think I saved it. It was from clowndating.com. So I'm, I'm saying if you're in one of the more fringe dating sites, maybe you want to use a super special name that you don't use anywhere else and have it connected to a super special email you don't have connected to anywhere else. And use pictures that you don't use anywhere else. Um, Tenai is a piece of software. So if I see a picture and you've used your LinkedIn picture for your clowndatings.com picture, I can search and connect those two and go, Bob the Clown is also Bob CEO. That could be a really fun scandal. Another way to do it is Google Goggles, where you use the Google Goggles app and you take a picture and it searches the internet. I haven't had much luck with this. It seems to always pick something that it really shouldn't have. It's good with uh, physical locations, like if you take a picture of this bridge, it figures out the GPS coordinates and tells you where it is. Another fun thing was truedater.com. So if you are a really bad dater and you sprinkled your PII everywhere, be careful because truedater and websites like don'tdatemgirl.com um, they'll post about you, and they'll post stories. And, and this one particular set of, of um, comments was kind of interesting because it was the same guy, and uh, he's married, not divorced, wrong age, he doesn't have a PhD. And I think there were four or five comments on this guy who was just duping everybody, and all these girls knew about truedater.com. So uh, I would advise not going out with Tuscan eyes. And, you know, choose a name. That's how I do it. I, I like to stay under the radar. I have a boyfriend now, but, you know, if I went back on, I, you know, keep it real hard to figure out who I am. Google Goggles isn't going to figure that out. Oh, this was the website I was trying to find out. This was um, not clown dating, personals. So if you have a real love for your cat and you're looking for that special date, you can go to personals.com. <laughs> and... <clears throat> find somebody that also has a passion for their cat. Maybe you don't want that connected. Um, LinkedIn is really interesting, but it's not very anonymous. So you can set your LinkedIn. If you want to see who's looking at you and you have an unpaid account, that means that everybody else can also see when you look at them. If you have a paid account, you can be a little more anonymous. I talked to some recruiters after I gave this speech one time, and they said, oh, Kelly, Oh, Kelly, you have to watch out. And um, I guess people who are on top secret projects oftentimes will put too much information in their LinkedIn profile. So when the recruiters are trying to sift through all of these resumes, they'll notice all of this information that they don't feel like they should be seeing. And because they may be looking at 20 top secret applicants, when you put all of that together, it gets to be a lot. So if you are a top secret applicant, can you please, for the sake of society, just tone down your awesomeness on LinkedIn. Thank you. Uh, and this particular one is just my page. Um, what it shows is that if they're a member, it's some, it shows as LinkedIn member. Sometimes it shows as someone in the executive function in a computer software industry from San Francisco Bay Area. And then third, that was an intern I had, and she constantly looks at my LinkedIn profile. She has not read my social engineering rules. But... Another thing is his Amazon wish lists are by default public. So you can search a lot of things. In this case, um, I looked at a person called the Big Boss. So maybe you want to know what books your boss is reading, because maybe that kind of tells you where his mind is. And um, in this case, it looks like this boss was looking at teaches you when to quit and the obstacles between vision and reality. That's kind of boring, they're all business, but you know, you might learn something really interesting about your boss or a friend. I, I gave this talk at a university last week and all of the kids immediately logged in and made their wish lists private. I have a feeling they had a reason. So I also, because I have these skills, we all have these skills, but you know, whatever, I advertise, am popular with my friends. So um, I had a girlfriend, and she was dating this guy, but then he got kind of cold and aloof, and she thought he might be dating 
someone else. So she asked me to look up this person, and I did. I found the email. I found all this stuff. And then I found, like, a live journal she did when she was 18. And it had a quote like, I never thought I would voluntarily dress up as Cher for Halloween, but it worked, and it was warm. So I found out a certain friend of mine ended up in the same cell as CJ. I don't know. What I did learn is if I had a live journal account from 19, I should probably close it because it seems like it could be regrettable. The not-so-friendly skies. One is Google shows flights all the time. Who flies a lot? Businessmen, executives. The United Upgrade list, it's public. I mean, it's only got the last three digits of the last name and the you know, first digit of the first name. But if you were looking for someone, you would be able to find them. Maybe. And if it was somebody like Jim Manico in the front row who flies a lot, I could probably, if I really worked at it, stalk him. I, I would know where to start off in Hawaii and I could just keep bouncing off. I could run an app that just con constantly mined all the flights looking for him on the upgrade list. And I don't know. I don't know what information I would get, but that seems kind of freaky and scary. This is Plane Finder. Has anyone heard of it? You see a plane in the sky and you um, put it up, it does the GPS locations and then it can actually tell you where the plane is and geo coordinates. That can be fun. I was flying back from China one day and a friend used it to find me. So it was kind of funny. This is the dark side. It's not illegal, but it's kind of, kind of feel like you need a shower afterwards. So Zillow, Trulio, Spokio, Block Shopper. All of your information is out there, especially if you're a homeowner. How much you spent for your house, um, when it was sold, who you bought it with. Marriage records can be really hard to find, at least in the state of California. So figuring out if someone is married is really difficult. Last year, a friend of mine was dating this guy. And all of the dates had to be done by 8.30. And there were all these weird rules. So she began suspecting that he might be married. So she asked me to, to kind of help. And I couldn't find a wedding record, but I did find a Zillow record that showed he had purchased a house recently with a, a woman, or like three years ago. And um, using that information, she was able to find out that uh, he was not the single guy she had hoped for and then kind of moved on. So if you... There's really no way to get Zillow information off, but it's out there and it is kind of interesting. Mugshots. Finding criminals can sort of be tough because you have to go to the uh, county that they were arrested in. Um, so, but you can go into your hometown county and start searching for people. That can kind of be interesting. It gives you all of the details, all of the police reports. Most of these things aren't sealed. You can learn a lot of information very quickly. And luckily in my case, uh, it turns out my friends and family have remarkably clean records. And that's kind of what it looks like. Somebody failed to appear subpoena. It was a dojane. Another one is the Megan's Law Offender Light app. This is good if you're a female and you're looking for housing. This will tell you where all of the sexual offenders are in your area. Um, can be useful. Search dig Diggity. This is a good way of finding PII on the internet in cloud-based storage. So if your social security number is out there, or your medical records, or any other stuff that's in the cloud, uh, it was created by Stotts & Lou, which is a consultancy firm. It's kind of good. I haven't had a lot of luck with it, and I, I don't know if I'm not using it right or if it's just really slow. But I like the idea, and they seem to keep making new versions, so I'm really hopeful that it will get better. Yes, I had that worry, which is why I haven't done it extensively. It's kind of the worry people had back in the day when everybody wanted their own domain name, and so they were afraid just by searching for the domain name, somebody else would take it. And I think that's a, still a valid fear. Uh, when you post at 16, do you still want it to be available at 40? 
This is probably more true to your kids who grew up in the cyber age and those things. And do you want to have to ever justify your purchases from 20 years ago? I personally don't. So what can you do? Um, don't do sensitive things on your main accounts. Close out accounts regularly. Don't use OAuth for touchy situations. Single sign-on solutions can be bad. I don't use those at all. Uh, remove yourself from Spokio. Periodically Google yourself. Uh, track old accounts down and delete them. And that's it. Any questions? Uh, just because you start, I, I know, and I, I've had developers bringing this to me, that the information should be contained and brought in. I'm kind of paranoid. I think that somehow they'll share information or more than in the architecture. So it just depends. Yeah, no, they change a lot, though, um, other than checking their blog. I don't. But the, both of you can are welcome to donuts for that, or cupcakes for that. <laughs> That's definitely a cupcake-worthy question. And yes, it is. It's just maybe not something you want to share if an employer decided to look for you. Yes. Personal honeypots, so. Misinformation, that's a great idea. Just loading the world down with all these mismade facts of you. Putting lots of people you really don't know. If you put a lot of um, Facebook requests out, a lot of those people will accept, even though they don't know you, because they want to be polite. So you can, you can build a false world. And that's another way of staying anonymous. So also a cupcake-worthy question if you're interested. Any other questions? I like it. Um, I used to have a manager who had a very, very unique name, and he was scared to death, right, Ed, um, about doing anything on the internet because he would get found so quickly. So. Yeah, and there's not, unfortunately, I don't know anything. It's a good question, but I don't know any way to prevent other people with the same name from behaving. <laughs> it's a good point. Also a cupcake-worthy question if you're interested. Yes, they do. So you can choose it. I like to know who looked at me, so then that means I give up my right to stay private. That's true. Well, it's actually only during the time that it's changed, so I would only get to see people during that half hour. Yeah. Any further questions? Oh. Google goggles or 10i? Oh, okay. Yeah, usually you have to use a few because none of them are particularly wonderful. Oh, that's a good idea.
or search for more of their friends. If you know enough of the people in their community on Facebook, you can maybe find them. My brother tried to hide from me like that, but I, I found him by um, finding enough of our, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. It is wonderful. It's great weather. It's cold here, but it's lovely. Anything else? Oh, yeah. That's a good thing, too. You can search the DMV stuff. But you have to have their license numbers. Oh. Yeah, lawyers. That's true. That's true. I've used the, at least the law ones before. Very cool. And that's called Lord and Abbott? Lord and Abbott. Abbott. Okay. Thank you. I've never heard of it. And that's also a co- uh, cupcake question if you're interested. Um, not that I am aware of. I know you can opt out of LinkedIn and then just not have a public profile, but I don't know of a way to, on the card. Yes, sir. Um, I, I don't have too strong of one. What I've seen architecturally and cryptographically, most of them have been pretty good, but um, I, I probably am not the expert. Also, a cupcake question. Yes, you can. You can totally search out and see what people have given and how much, too. So you've gotten like three cupcakes. I know. Yeah, and um, if people are obsessed enough, they'll keep searching. Oh, yeah, I've heard about that. You can see what your neighbors are giving to and kind of learn about it and go, really? Yes, sir. So that's a great question. By the way, a cupcake for you if you're interested. Um, I don't know of anybody, and I don't know of anybody that does it well. I think somebody told me about reputation.com. We'll look for what? Reputation Defender. I've heard of a few, but I haven't heard of any one where someone said, this is absolute and this does the trick and it's honest to goodness. Um, 
yeah, you can find out people's trees and Yeah. Right, right. You may be paying someone that's making it worse. Ripoff report is well known for not removing anything, including well known false things. I think you can pay. Six or eight hundred dollars to have arbitration, where you may get it removed, and so that's one of their big money revenues. But that's a good point. Also, don't a uh, coke cake for you. In the back. That's a great point, a cupcake for you if you're interested. I know people who do that, and I know people who have like 100 email addresses just to spread out the information. Um, both are good. And to clear up, I'm not saying anything bad about any of the reputation services. I just don't know a lot about them. And the few things I've heard was they weren't complete enough. All right, anything else? Yes. Oh, yeah, Spokio does that well. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, PIPL? I did till Spokio came out, and Spokio was better, I thought, than people. But also, cupcakes for both of you if you're interested. All right, I see people getting antsy, so I'll take one more question if anybody's got anything. All right, come and get a cupcake if you're interested, and thank you.